in this section what we're going to do is we're going to do pretty much the same thing we did uh, with the first derivative test however we're going to look at closed intervals so just real quick when we talk about closed intervals like in this case the interval from 0 to 4 and we say it's closed we're looking at the interval on the real line that includes every point every number between 0 and 4 and also includes the endpoints 0 and 4 if we would leave the brackets if it instead of brackets we would use parentheses it would be the same thing except in this case we would not be including the endpoints so the x equals 0 and x equals 4 would not be included but in this case we're going to be looking at closed intervals. When you have a closed interval and a continuous function then there's a theorem that tells you that the function will achieve both its absolute max and its absolute min. So if you draw the graph of the function then you're going to have a point at which the function will have the largest y value possible that would be the absolute max and the smallest y value possible and that would be the absolute min. So to do to find it well, this absolute maximum, maxima and minima can occur uh, at critical points and at endpoints. So in this case, we find the critical points by finding the first derivative and setting it equal to zero. And in this case, the first derivative would be six minus six x. Derivative of one is zero. Derivative of six x is six, and derivative of uh, negative 3x squared is going to be negative 6x and when you set that equal to 0 you're going to have this equation that you can solve by adding 6x on both sides and dividing by 6 to obtain x equals 1 so you have your critical number here this is a candidate for it for it to be a absolute max or an absolute min um, now you would also have to find those points where the or those values of x where the derivative is undefined. However, there's none of those because the function again is a polynomial, so it's defined everywhere. So once you have found this, your candidates to be absolute mean and absolute max are the endpoints, uh, x equals to one and x equals to 4. I should have started with x equals 0, x equals 1, and x equals 4. So you, what you're going to do is you're going to evaluate your function, not the derivative, but the function itself at those points. Why would you do that? Well, because you know the absolute mean, absolute max have to occur in this interval um, the absolute min and max at this interval have to occur uh, on the interval um, and what you know they have to occur either at the end points or at the critical points so once you evaluate them all the largest number you obtain is going to be your absolute max and you, the smallest number you obtain is going to be your absolute min so let's take a look f of 0 when you plug 0 here you get 1 plus 0 minus 0 sorry about that so 1 plus 0 minus 0 is 1 when you plug x equals 1 here you get 1 plus 6 is 7 minus 3 is 4 and when you plug 4 you get 1 plus 24 25 minus this is going to be 16 times 3 which is going to be 48 so you're going to have 25 minus 48 is going to be negative 23 so um, so what do we have well the largest number of this three numbers is going to be this one right here so you have an absolute max for the function absolute max I should have written max at uh, x equals 1 and the absolute max is 4 and you have an absolute min at x equals 4 so let's take a look at our 
uh, the graph of the function, if you see, oops, I had an extra problem there. Let me clean that out. There we go. So when we look at our function between 0 and 4, at x equals 1, we have our absolute max, and the point was 1, 4. That's going to be our absolute max. And at 4, negative 23, so down here, my vertical lines are not very vertical. Um, that 23, that's going to be our uh, absolute mean. So this is a lot easier than the first derivative test. You have to find your critical points, then you evaluate f at the critical points and the endpoint. So if you want to write the steps, it would be just find your first derivative, set it equal to zero, or whenever it does not exist, then you're going to solve for your critical points or values. say numbers and then you're going to evaluate f at endpoints and uh, and uh, critical numbers And then here you choose which are uh, the largest is your absolute max, and the smaller is the absolute mean. All right, and that's that. That's all you do for this section. I'll do another uh, exercise, another example in the next video, but this this is a lot simpler than what we did in the last two chapters. All right, if you have any questions, though, let me know and uh, I'll be glad to answer.